Hi everyone, it's Alison Edgar, MBE. I think this is the first actual YouTube video that I've done since I got the honour from the Queen. So um, I'm still in a bit of shock, to be honest. So for those of you who don't know, um, the Queen every year creates two lists, one around her birthday, the other one at the new year. And she actually gives people an honour who have gone above and beyond in their chosen field. So for me, it's for business and entrepreneurship. So it's just lovely to be honoured. But what that means for you guys, it just means that I'll continue to, to do business as usual. It's lovely, it's, it's not any different. Um, and today, so today is Wednesday. No, it's not, it's Tuesday. The Tuesday before we go into lockdown again in the UK. Um, and I've got some two really exciting things um, on the card. So shortly, I am just about to speak to the first ever sales apprenticeship cluster in Ireland. So a lot, you, you'll know yourself through apprenticeships. There's lots of different things you can do. Plumbing, heating, marketing, you can do a degree apprenticeships. But this is the very first one that they've done for sales in Ireland. So I'm uber excited to um, that they chose my book, Secrets of Successful Sales, to be the textbook, the only book that they are using on the framework. So they've obviously got the framework and the courses and the bits they do, but the book that they are following is mine. So I am so excited. Um, the other thing that I'm doing today, and I'll, I'll fill you in throughout the day as the things we've done and the, the results of it and what's happened, is I am also doing a live, live with the real people, not virtual, not on Zoom. I'm doing a live talk um, to a group of recruiters in Swindon and we will be talking about um, confidence and transformation. We'll also be talking about building relationships. Oh, can't say that. Building relationships remotely and social selling. So I've got an absolutely action-packed day. But what, what does that mean to you? Because ultimately you really are watching the YouTube channel to see if there's any tippets that you can take away from the things that we do. So I think the first thing I talk about a lot is confidence, confidence to stand out. And the, the words I actually use is, why would you blend in when you can stand out? So the reason that I have been asked to do the talk at the event, and the reason they chose the book in the first place, they had seen me on social media. And I put a post out today on LinkedIn that sometimes we'll put out a post and we will get you know, maybe sometimes like a hundred thousand views at the post, over a thousand comments, lots of likes. Some days we'll put something out and we get hundreds of views. And some days we'll put things out and we get virtually nothing. But the thing is, you never really know who is watching. I suppose it's a little bit with the YouTube channel that, you know, the views steadily grow, but sometimes you think, oh, I don't know if I really want to be doing that and spending time, but you just never know who's watching. So I will catch you later um, and we will have a look at what we've been doing today. Question from Clara, one of our one of our students. Something I come across a lot is how business and sales is a male dominated job. What do you Ooh. think are some of the strengths unique to women that give us the competitive edge of being successful in business and sales? So excellent question, Clara. Love it, Clara. I see you on the screen too. I yeah. see you. Um, it's really interesting. I've come across this a lot. So Having worked in hospitality and sales, I think we have got a bit of an advantage. Not, not. A, I don't mean advantage, but com in comparison to other industries is the point I'm trying to make. So if you look at the gender pay gap, which comes across, uh, you know, a, a lot of women that I work with are senior leaders in big organisations like... Um, Hewlett Packard or BT or whatever non-sales roles, the gender pay gap is massive because as soon as you go off and you have a baby and all that kind of stuff, you're not on the ladder. It's and I don't have an answer for it. But what I'm trying to say is, like in sales, if you're smashing your target, 
or if you're in hospitality, if you're managing a department, it, no, people don't care what you've got between your legs. I think so. We've got that advantage that in sales, it's not as bad as it is in other industries. And I think that's where I kind of use being female to my advantage because, and again, I think it's that why would you blend in when you can stand out? So a lot of male salespeople have got, they, they get a bad reputation because they're seen as the shiny shoes, sh you know, cheap suit, pushy sales guy, you know, and you only have to look at, I was going to say, like people like Grant Cardone or the Wolf of Wall Street, you know, they get a bad rep. Whereas I think women tend to have better emotional intelligence and, and bearing in mind sales and customer service is exactly the same thing. Sometimes the customers, if if you if you again use the empathy and the emotional intelligence, sometimes customers will open up more to a woman. And and it, again, it's all about getting the customer to open up by good questions and you get to the needs and then you match what you sell. So I've never, and even now in the sales training industry, I would probably say again, not that I'm blowing my own trumpet, but I would say that I'm probably the leading female sales trainer in the UK. And there's like loads of men. And this is where, again, sometimes my fixed mindset does come in, especially in the speaking world, because a high percentage of speakers are male. And I'm thinking they're no better than me. It's just literally it, they're, they've, they've been around longer in that role and people don't like change and they tend to give it for jobs for the boys. But that makes me more determined to work harder to get my brand out there further to go. So I think I use the 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 power of the female to prove myself more. So again, coming back to the question earlier, what motivates me? I think like really, uh, I'm proud to be a female, and I, I think I walk in, and that's why I wear pink. So I don't I don't know if I tell the story about pink in the book, but the reason the pink is on is. Again, why would you blend in? Yeah, the book is pink. I can see it. Um, why would you blend in when you can stand out? So I was going to Downing Street. So for my very first time, I'd been invited to Downing Street. And I was doing the research. See, got that in the book. And I go online. And I think, what do people wear? It's winter. So it's like this time, December. And they're all there wearing black coats. And I went, I'm not going to miss that opportunity to stand out outside number 10 so I went off to Debenhams to buy a new coat and it didn't matter what colour the coat was I just did not want to be wearing a black coat I wanted to be standing out look at me outside number 10 on the door and the, the the coat was pink and that's where the brand it's not that I love pink it's just it stands out so I think again coming back to the question Clara that I love it if I go into one of the sales training events or the business events because it's dominated by men and I pitch up with the pink lipstick and the pink and and I think people think I'm quite from the brand they think it's a quite girly brand you know you would think oh she's but I'm kick-ass and I love it I can hold my own you know so I think it's, it's the balance of that and I think it is about being, being confident being ballsy being sassy and actually you know standing out and and being the best you that you can be so I I, I kind of think you make your own make your own go for it don't use being a woman as an excuse use it as a strength excellent Clara do you want to come in there and say anything yeah I, I completely agree with you um I suppose I'm working in management at the moment and a big thing for me is I think there should be more women in sales and I do think that we have many strengths like so completely agree thanks so well much done, Clara. <laughs> So I am now back after an amazing day, literally. So first of all, I did the webinar with the students who are on their sales apprenticeship, the very first sales apprenticeship in Ireland. And oh, it was absolutely amazing. So we did a Q&A. They were asking me questions about secrets of successful sales, my book. I was giving them my top tips on confidence, on what they should do on their careers and women in business. And um, it was just, it was brilliant. They, um, they were like little observers. They were joining in and they were asking lots of questions. So hopefully I've made an impact with them. And then my other event today was my live um, 
training course on social selling. So I was working with a recruitment um, team of ladies who have quite a lot of experience under their belt in field sales or um, face to face sales, but not so much on LinkedIn or social selling. So I was helping them, giving them my hints and tips and tricks, uh, how to connect with people online. Because I think it's, it's interesting and it feeds back to a little story I talk about my dad on one of the other YouTube um, videos where my dad got made redundant in his 50s as a draftsman on the drafts boards and he learned, he did an HND in AutoCAD and his skills were current and um, contemporary but he had all the old school skills and I think that's what came out today that the ladies have got a lot of sales skills but not so much the social media and it's the combination of the two skill sets that really make them commodities and great at the, the current climate. So, you know, if that is you and maybe you have lost your job or been made redundant, then I think my top tip is to try and gain some new skills and make yourself a commodity. So thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you've taken something from this. What if I'd love you to do is subscribe into the channel and turn on the notifications. Till the next time, I've been Alison Edgar.